Oh, thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Y'all better shut up because you're already using part of my time. <laughs> they started me when I got out of that chair down there. And we're supposed to stop in 10 minutes. That'll be a record if anybody does that. But it's pretty obvious how I got to be a, got to lead this parade of, of has-beens. <laughs> I just kept hanging around. You're supposed to be dead and, and gone long before being out of office almost 40 years, but here I am. And <laughs> and since I am so old and still on my feet, I get to go first. I dared in my inaugural address to quote two Yankees with Abraham Lincoln, and you should have seen Mills Godwin when I said that. <laughs> with Abraham Lincoln, I suggested that we insist upon an open society with malice toward none, charity for all. And I accepted a challenge of Daniel Webster to see whether we also, in our day and generation, may not perform something worthy to be remembered. I sought to convince Virginians that the era of defiance is behind us and urged that we endeavor to make today's Virginia a model of race relations. How do you reach such a goal? Byron Perrier, an African-American plasterer from Newport News, asked me a related question during a campaign stop in 1969. How do we know your promises of enhanced opportunities are different from so many empty promises that we've heard every four years in the past? I can't prove now what will happen in the future, I replied, but I hope to be able to say to you four years from now, that I told you so. So, on your first day in office, you signed an order prohibiting racial or other discrimination throughout the entire governmental establishment. You appoint Bill Robertson, principal of an all-black elementary school in Roanoke, as special assistant to the governor. The first African-American professional ever to serve in the office of Virginia's governor. You charge him to engage the black community and see that the full talents of that community are sought and utilized to meet employment needs of the Commonwealth. Further, have him seek the cooperation of private employers to recognize, utilize, and compensate the full talents of black Virginians. Recognize the unfairness of an all-white, male, old, selective service system, which is drafting kids, two-thirds black, to fight an unpopular war in Vietnam. Find Ernie Fears 
athletic director at Norfolk State and make him the first African-American state director of selective service in the nation. Charge him to integrate that organization and assure that it not only operates with complete fairness, but that everyone perceives that it operates that way. Recognize serendipitous opportunity. When orders of the United States courts confirm constitutional rights of kids to attend school without regard to the color of their skin, shun the precedent of defiance set by other Southern governors in Alabama, Arkansas, Georgia, and Mississippi. Abandon policies of our 192 Constitution to deny voting rights to some citizens. Send your children to schools to which they would have been assigned by the courts and thereby demonstrate symbolically and without resistance that Virginia is an integral part of this republic in full compliance with all of its laws and the requirements of its institutions. Did it work? Well, Byron Perrier introduced me two years later as a blue-eyed brother who could say, I told you so. <laughs> <laughs> Colgate Darden, a former governor and beloved elder statesman in an earlier time, asked for a copy of the well-known photograph of daughter Talo and me going to Kennedy High School in 1970. He said it represents the most significant happening in this Commonwealth in my lifetime. Vince Callahan, a longtime friend and political associate, paid me a high compliment by publicly stating that I was a curmudgeon on civil rights. <laughs> but the ultimate praise came years later in an, at an oyster festival in Urbana. There's that old son of a bitch, Holton, <laughs> said a half-inebriated guest as he walked opposite me during those festivities. But he concluded that cloudy appraisal by saying, best damn governor we ever had. 